Live international football on five. One nil, one nil, one nil. Will us Scots still be singing after the second half of the Euro 2004 playoff? Or will the Dutch show some courage and come from behind to grind out a result? Let's hope not, eh? Holland versus Scotland. 7.15 tomorrow, live and exclusive on five. Unmissable. Paul O'Grady is better known. Yes, uh, Nicholas this time. Uh, oh, I've got a senior moment. Uh, it's... Um, <laughs> uh, 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 oh, Out of time. Oh. Really savage. Yeah, really savage. Yeah. Yeah. That's a wrong answer. So we're reuniting a key and taking you down to three, approaching 650 pounds on the clock. Who is... No, I didn't, I didn't do yeah. anything. Who is... <laughs> an Who is... Who is... Who is... Who is... Who is... Richard Baker. 19 Keys, 7.30, weeknights on 5. Quentin Wilson resorts to bribery to try and get his celebrity worst drivers through the next challenge. Whether he's successful or not, you'll have to find out in half an hour. That's after some more near catastrophic moments in Dumber and Dumber 2. I'm Tommy Vance, pronounced Vance. Come on then. Welcome to Dumber and Dumber, where some are born dumb, some choose dumbness, and some have dumbness thrust upon them. In tonight's cocktail of collisions, we mix a slab of bully beef with a measure of gliding gonzo oh! and a pinch of third-rate evil Knievel. It's blowing hard at this American airfield, but that doesn't bother this aged daredevil who's doing his first skydive, age 75. <laughs> He'll be strapped to his instructor for his first great leap into the unknown. He's my partner. He's my lifeline. I wouldn't trust that instructor with a paper dart, but the dress rehearsal goes off like a charm. But no more play acting. It's time for the real thing. Why an old chap would choose to throw himself out of an airplane is a mystery to me, sports fans, but fair play. And now, here they go. <laughs> or not, as the case may be. That shifty-looking instructor bloke forgot to undo his seatbelt, and now they're flapping in the breeze like a couple of useless things. The instructor tries to pull his old man back in. It's not working. The punter holding the camera gives him a taste of the old boot, trying to dislodge him. That's not going to work. Now is it, Mr. Spielberg? Cut the cord and end this now. That's better. Now they're just hurtling toward the ground from 10,000 feet. Who says stupid white men can't jump? The ice cool OAP sums up his harrowing ordeal. That's weird. Yeah, I couldn't see, I couldn't hear anything. I didn't know what was happening. I was just dangling out there. If they dropped a few like him over Europe in the war, it really would have been all over by Christmas. <laughs> Daredevil Ken Power's middle name is either Danger or Dumber. He's about to attempt a world record by shooting his car across the St. Lawrence River from Canada to New York State, a distance of more than a mile. I always like the state of New York, so I'm sure I hope they like me when I get there. Maybe if there's a parade on they might love, a parade of half-naked men, Powers builds an 85-foot ramp and straps a super-powered rocket jet to his car. You could put a rocket and an elephant's back in, and it's going to go whichever way it's aimed at 400 miles an hour. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to work that out. Oh, hang on. Yes, you do. I had been in the car, but I'd never driven it. Of course not. Now, why would you do that? Go. Go. Do it. Do it. Now. Ken fastens himself in, revs the engine, gives the signal, and he's off. 
He rockets down the runway at 180 miles per hour. And his fan bloody amazing jet car crumbles in midair. He's got six emergency parachutes, but five of them don't work. I know what goes up has to come down, and I'm seeing chutes blow off, and I'm thinking, are there any left? He manages to open his one functioning chute and lands safely in the drink. God knows what it would have done upside down. I mean, they might still be looking for my eyeball. The dented daredevil now admits his setup wasn't quite perfect. The chutes were wrong. The ramp was wrong. The car was wrong. It wasn't stable. Come on, a good workman never blames his tools or his rocket launcher. An older but perhaps no wiser danger man reflects on the aftermath of his accident like a seasoned professional. It actually took me about four months before I could really walk good. Looks like the accident wiped his adverbs clean away. Amazing how Spanish geezers think it's macho to get in the way of a bull, but you're also supposed to get out of its way. <laughs> Ouch! Thanks for coming. The first time bullfighter wants more gore, and so he goads it some more. And when you got a goad, you got a goad. And when the goading gets tough, the bull charges and hurts you quite a lot. Oh, well, I guess it's back to the Manuel laboring job. Get it? <laughs> Here's a chap pulled over by the law for driving too slowly. He invites the cops to examine his trunk, which is filled with marijuana. One look at his stash of wacky backy, and he's in the not so wacky back of a squad car. Fortunately, hemp drugs have enabled this man to accept his fate with zen like calm. Oh, I can't believe it! Oh, no! 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 God, I can't believe it! Maybe it's just starting to kick in. Far out, man. Oh, 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 no, please, no. No, please. Please, no. You're not paranoid, mate. They really are out to get you. What was that? Mm -hmm. You are late. No, it's around you. I'm just Pull yourself together. You're going somewhere you can refine those Class C business skills. The state oh, pen. No, please, no! It's Thanksgiving, a time for Americans of all ages to get together and deep fry a turkey. Very delicious. Have you ever eaten one? Very delicious. Oddly, his wife is not convinced. I probably would eat it, but I don't, I don't want him to cook it. Inspired by the legend of deep-fried Mars bars, he turns up the burners. And what better spot than on his highly flammable wooden porch? I don't think you read the directions. Either he's cocked up or they like their barbecues big out there. The firefighters arrive a few minutes after the nick of time. Meanwhile, he's in the doghouse, or he would be if he hadn't burnt that down too. I felt like a fool. Because you are one. The house was rebuilt, but they left the remains in the backyard. Yum, leftovers. Not to be put off, next Thanksgiving, the old fool invites the local fire warden. Have you ever eaten a lift? It's delicious, but... Mmm, another triumph for the Atkins diet. But what has his wife learnt? It's hard to tell, but there are nouns in there somewhere. You don't never want to try nothing different, so he tried it, it was different. 
And now, from a busy high street somewhere near you, the story of one parking space and two mean mothers determined to get it. It should be clear to anyone that the white car got there first, but the lady in red doesn't seem to care. She steps on the gas and gives the white car a playful nudge. White stays out, blocking Red's move. So far, it's just car chess. The lady started making gestures and said, this is my space, and if you don't move out of it, I'll push you out. The White Queen thinks it's all over, so she nips off to feed the meter. Then the Red Queen makes her move. White gets help from her son. That'll work, but too late. Queen to Bishop Six. Checkmate. She gets her parking place, and all it costs is a 500-pound transmission job. She's in, but would she ever get out again? Clank, clank. Whoa. After the break, assault and baseball battery. A pair of all-American Muppets go mano a mano in the park. And watch this bloke fall over. Fifty greatest floor fillers is the ultimate party album. The biggest dance floor anthems of all time. Fifty greatest floor fillers. Guaranteed to fill any dance floor. The Gillette gift set. Yet another gift in our three for two mix and match. Peter Kay, live at the Bolton Albert Halls. I rang a takeaway last night. I said, Dear Deliver. They said, No, we do lamb, chicken, and fish. That's the joke, huh? The funniest stand up you'll ever see. Gary Jokey. Own it on DVD and video. I'm going to get home and get settled. I tell Sky Plus what telly I want to watch. And it just stores it. There's no fiddling around with tapes or anything like that. I don't know how they do it. The ultimate cheese party. Three CDs of the biggest party anthems ever. Black Lace, Jive Bunny, Damien, DJ Otzi, Lance Ketchup, Village People. 50 tunes guaranteed to get any party rocking, no matter who's been invited. The office party, the Christmas party, weddings, anniversaries. The ultimate cheese party. Gorgon Zola Tastic. Get dancing to probably the finest cheese platter ever assembled. Cheese on Oodle Do. Get in the mood for the party season with the ultimate cheese party. It's out now. Kiss presents Hot Joints. One awesome album full of the year's hottest tracks, including Fat Man Scoop, Black Eyed Peas, DMX, Blue Cantrell, Sean Paul, and the massive 50 Cent. Kiss presents Hot Joints, out now. Time comes, you have to leave behind the old Hellraiser man. Stop it! But love's not something you can plan for, is it? People I deal with are waste. That's why I'm such an animal, man. He dumps me, man. Breaks my heart. Yeah! That's cold. <sighs> but this is the thing about see. You just never know what's gonna happen. Didn't go too well today at all, and it's completely my fault. And it's nothing to do with my driving skills, it's to do with my hideous ego. 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 Celebrities! Yeah. I'd rather work with children. Britain's worst celebrity driver, 8.30 tonight on Five.
Welcome back to Dumber and Dumber. Can you walk and chew gum at the same time? Yeah? Then you're overqualified to appear on this program, which is strictly for idiots only. Do you see? <laughs> the man in red has just delivered a court summons. You find this person and just issue him the paper. Sounds simple enough, so why is he legging it? Well, I kind of sort of feared it for my life and jumped in a car. The elephantine defendant lets him have it with a baseball bat. Spleen successfully vented, she goes back inside. There's just one minor detail. That's not his car. He just hid in the first unlocked auto he could find. Why? So I wouldn't get beat on with a baseball bat. Time to leave the relative safety of someone else's battered car. Uh-oh, but she's seen him. He floors it and heads for home base. I was lucky. Yeah, you were. Unlike the man whose car got flattened. Because when it comes to naked aggression, Babe Ruthless is in a league of her own. This is Daryl McKee. He makes a crust taking tourists up in his hot air balloon, a frequent sight on the Sydney skyline. If you see one of his balloons coming your way, run like the wind. I'm going to meet our patients in the morning and ask if there's been any dangerous flights or anything. And I usually respond, well, I do have a few, but you don't want to hear them now. Here he drops a passenger off in the middle of Sydney Harbour. There were nine people who were up to their knees in water with the basket tipping over and, in our view, in danger of uh, perhaps drowning. Which is why they banned him from flying, right? No, not right. Where's the excitement in a soft landing when you can frolic among high-voltage power lines and land in someone's backyard? Still, this drongo reckons his safety record is second to none. 12 years and around 1,200 hours of flying. I haven't as much as put a scratch on anybody yet. Scratch, no. Fear of God, yes. This is the kind of thing that gave the Hindenburg a bad name. Oh, the humanity. <laughs> While leaving a multi-story car park, this chap went mental after he dented his rental. Maybe he can fix it himself. No one's looking. But he's miscalculated. And in a move worthy of a little Dutch boy or an idiot, he gets his finger stuck. Fortunately, help is at hand for his hand. How are you doing, Joe? There's nothing for it but to rip out the whole fuel line. All because this Joe was too tight to spend the extra few quid on insurance. <laughs> After a quick lube job, he's free. He thought a few scratches on his vehicle would cost him an arm and a leg. Instead, he nearly lost his finger. Over on the dark side of small town USA, the old Bill pull over a man made of booze. You been drinking? Well, it's kind of obvious. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yet the copper seems to think he's spotted a fellow intellectual. You know, what's your uh, level of education? I've got 20 years of education. I graduated 10th grade twice. <laughs> You graduated 10th grade twice. Yeah. And so you've got 20 years of education. Yeah. Boy, do you know your ABCs? Sort of. Sort of? Let's see what he remembers from Harvard Law School. H-I-J-K. L-M-O-P. And what about N, as in numbskull? What? All right. Give me a P, please, Bob. Hey, I'm going to go there and, like, drain the vein. Hold on a second, right here. Well, this would be better than doing it in your car. 
Since he couldn't get through the alphabet, he's about to learn that N stands for nicked. N-O-P. Alpha Betty Spaghetti comes up with a better spell check than that. Fancying himself as the next governor of Hicksville, Arizona, this bodybuilder has overcompensated by slapping on the old baby oil. But instead of sweeping the judges off their feet, all he did was trip himself up. Whoa. There's such a thing as being too slick for your own good, mate. But that definitely ain't it. Now, everyone has a dream. No, it's not waving his fingers around. This chappy wants to fly. There's just one problem. Yeah, I'm afraid of heights. It's mostly the fear of falling from the heights. He obviously thought that one through, but that doesn't stop him buying a 30-year-old hang glider. Matt Anderson, the brainless birdman, tries a running jump, but he's forgotten one thing. <laughs> Gravity. Plan B. The boy genius ties himself to a snowmobile, but he crash lands before takeoff. I didn't have any instruction at all. No, really? And now our wrong brother reaches for the sky one more time. And this time it's left off for about three seconds. There's problems. I hit the ground really hard. Oh, look! He's three feet off the ground now. Pretty good right now. All right. And now Matt's dream finally comes true. He's airborne. It's off to A&E. And the ward for recovering propeller heads. Somewhere in suburbia, a working man arrives home. He's got good news. A pay rise, but he's sitting too close to the fireplace. Bummer! Now that paycheck is burning a hole in his pants. See him smile as he soaks his bottom. A bit of extra wedge in his pocket, and this bloke acts like he's got money to burn. Oh, come on. You would have said it too. Talent. <laughs> but the Burke who put this car dealer photo shoot together forgot that things can get slippery when wet. Can you hold still for a minute? Great, that's great. <laughs> yeah, if she wasn't drowning in an oil slick. No, stay there, don't move. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Maybe they should just let things slide. Then again, you could try digging your claws in. Sorry, pet, bad advice. Yeah, I think we'll call it a wrap, and I think maybe we shouldn't oil you down next time. Perhaps use baking soda or whole grain flour. <laughs> At a college football game in America's Deep South, they have the naffest football hooligans. What do you expect when the so-called athletes are all padded up like a bunch of girls? Plus, each side has its own mascot. In this case, a bogus Red Indian. Plus, Hell's own Peter Beardsley. Here's what happens when puppets attack. Come on, then, if you think you're hard enough. It's a fight to the end between Sock Puppet Sue and the sagging Satan. And the crowd are furious. Oh, no, they're not. Look, he's taken the devil's scalp. Come on, then, Lucifer. You're the fallen angel. Rip his bloody arms off. Here comes the police. They've got guns and presumably nothing better to do. Chief Feathers, not Beads, thinks he's won. But then so does the Ponce of Darkness. The officer on the scene is KG. Investigation is ongoing. What's to investigate? They're Muppets! And I was like, look, dude, we're just mascots. We're just playing. 
You don't take another mascot's head off. Don't make me mad. Hell hath no fury like an oversized cuddly toy. Shane apparently didn't have a strap on his head, which any good mascot would have. So the moral of this disturbingly stupid tale, a good mascot doesn't let go of his strap on. Yes, I really did just say that. This Skyver claims he sustained serious injuries on the job. Now he's at home being surveillanced because he's after a big fat wedge from the insurers. Okay, he's got the door open. He's getting in slowly. Nice work, fella. The bogus invalid better keep up the act because he's being watched by private dicks. That's private detectives for those of us in the know. Stand by. His vehicle's the brown Bronco. And now the invalid drives off as he has a perfect right to. In some countries, he'd be strapped to a wrought iron frame until he heals. But not in the US. You can go for a drive, as can these chaps. Let's come out here. But what's this? He's completely crutchless. He bends it like Beckham, Dunny. He has a little Prince Charles moment with his plant friends. He has a shifty around, but doesn't notice the guy with the camera right in his face. Mobile one to mobile two, stand by. Here's the really clever bit, the public removal of a neck brace. I think the PIs are getting a bit suspicious. All he needs to do now is to go off and come back with a couple of vacation-sized suitcases. Yes, he's off to Hawaii to, inverted commas, recuperate. He's nicked. And crime doesn't pay is the only compensation he'll be getting. They should cripple him for real. Back in Blighty now, where a cool dude is trying to hold up a bank. His note says, give me loads of money. But no one cares. Up goes the security screen. Our villain opts to do a runner. But it's not working. So he decides to threaten nobody. What this genius of the criminal underworld hasn't twigged is that the door is already unlocked. This robbery must have taken minutes in the planning. No need to throw away the key when they lock him up. He wouldn't know what it was anyway. That's all the madness I can take for one show, but we'll be back next week with another frothing bucket of insanity. So till then, stay dumb. You know it makes no sense. Coming next. Nobody looks in their mirrors more frequently than I do. I probably do. Jesus, Mary. <laughs> I was nowhere near it. That's a good idea, isn't it? <laughs>